It's time for the 1430 Connection on 1430 WNAV and 99.9 FM. Spotlighting news, newsmakers, and important community issues. Now, with this week's edition of the 1430 Connection, here is WNAV news anchor Donna Cole. Welcome to the 1430 Connection. I'm Donna Cole. In the studio with me is Dr. J. Barry Talley and Marjorie Rawhauser from the Friends of Naval Academy Music. Thank you both very much for joining me today. Thank, Thank you for you. having us. Barry, tell me about your background. You're here because you are part of the Friends of Naval Academy of Music, and I will start by saying, uh, as far as I can give our listeners, and many of our listeners listen to Navy sports here on WNAV, it is kind of what your group does is kind of similar to what the Naval Academy Athletic Association does, but for the arts. Is that true? It would be a David and Goliath comparison. Yes. I, I mean, we're a tiny operation. Mm-hmm. All right, tell me more about exactly what the Friends of the Naval Academy of Music does. You want to take it or you want me to? I'm sure. Uh, basically, Friends of the Naval Academy of Music, we are trying to promote music at the Naval Academy, similar to the way the NAAA promotes sports. But as Dr. Charlie said, uh, we're much smaller and we're also just getting started. Um, I got involved because I am a graduate of the Naval Academy and I was involved in the Glee Club and the choir and the Drummond Corps when I was there. And we're trying to help to, to secure private funding to ensure that these programs can continue and provide um, support to midshipmen and support to the Naval Academy and the Navy and the town of Annapolis. Yeah, the frankly. town of Annapolis is part of this, and we'll get that get into that. Are you still on active duty? I'm not. I retired from the Navy Reserve in 2010. Thank you for your service. You're welcome. Okay. Barry, how did you get involved with us? Well, I was for, for many, many years, for 35 years, uh, director of music at the Naval Academy, uh-huh. and I was deeply involved with many facets of, the, of life at the Naval Academy, uh, directing choirs in the chapel, musicals in Mahan Hall, providing music for special events in the yard, entertaining distinguished visitors, directing the men's glee club, performing often in the community. So uh, heavily involved. Before the, short answer. Before this interview started, you had said Marjorie was one of your students. Once upon a time. Yeah. We yeah. were all very young. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> let me let me guess. Your background growing up in where? Uh, Pennsylvania, York, Pennsylvania. York, Pennsylvania, not too far away. Growing up in York, Pennsylvania, you were involved with music through junior high, through maybe elementary school, certainly high school. Sure. I was in the high school band. I played the piano. I sang in some choirs growing up. Yes. What did that do for you? Um, well, it's, of course, um, like any activity, it was a way to meet friends. Uh, it, I think playing the piano helps to build self-confidence. Uh, performing in front of people also helps to build self-confidence. Um, I sang in my church choir, which was a way to support the church. So I think music does a lot of things for you, just like a lot of activities can Exposure do. to the arts. Sure. And it's important from the time we're born to the time we die. At the Naval Academy, things can get a little stressful, yes? Uh, just a little. And so was that a stress relief going into, were you in the Glee Club? Yes, I was. I was in the Women's Glee Club, which at the time was really small. It's grown a lot and has really, really gotten a lot better. Um, I was in the choir and the drum and bugle corps as well. And like a lot of activities at the Naval Academy, those activities provide a way for you to have some time, kind of some downtime Mm -hmm. from the stress, a way to meet friends you might otherwise not otherwise meet, and frankly, sometimes a chance to travel away from the academy that your classmates might not get if they're not in those activities. And that's a big deal. Uh, Yeah. It's a huge deal. And did your parents come visit you and see these performances? Um, They did. I was fortunate. Like you said, Pennsylvania, York, Pennsylvania is relatively close. My parents came to the Messiah every year that I performed it and many years after that, in fact. And these are very open to the general public many times. Sure, sure. And I, uh, I, I, you know, I, I'd like to hope that the reason we're doing the interview is to talk about how, how music, how Annapolis music, how Naval Academy music is embedded in the community here. Uh, we had a conversation beforehand about how uh, we tend to live in bubbles here and mm-hmm. people know what's immediately around them but tend to not look a lot beyond that. Right. And... Uh, I'd just like to, to say a few things about that, if I may. Absolutely, that, that, yes. Uh, starting with the chapel, that uh, services are open to the public. Music is a big part of those services. Uh, hundreds of Annapolitans attend chapel services regularly on Sunday, uh, where midshipmen choirs are heard. Thousands attend at Easter and Christmas. Uh, the, uh, the Glee Club performs concerts in Mahan Hall and the chapel that are open to the public. There's a winter musical. There's the annual Messiah performances and the Halloween concert that draw thousands of They're, they're incredible concerts and performances. Uh, if you haven't seen one, I have. They're, they're amazing. And tickets go quickly because they, they are amazing. Quickly. The, yeah. uh, uh, the, uh, our, our program involves our lo- 
local, professional Annapolis Symphony Orchestra, a great group. Uh, our pipes and drums, drum and bugle corps, uh, appear hundreds of times throughout the year. Uh, and I haven't even started talking about the Naval Academy Band, which are a fine group of professional yeah, we'll get into it. We'll musicians. get into all the clubs that fall underneath the uh, umbrella so, of so, you're trying to support. To, so over a thousand midshipmen, over a thousand, about the same size as the varsity athletic program. Over a thousand midshipmen are involved in making music at the Naval Academy, so there's a lot of it going on. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back with the 1430 Connection. Welcome back to the 1430 Connection. I'm Donna Cole. In the studio with me is Dr. J. Barry Talley and Marjorie Rawhauser. They are representing the Friends of Naval Academy Music. And the Friends of Naval Academy Music is the umbrella organization that's trying to ensure that the people that are performing music at the Naval Academy, the midshipmen that perform music at the Naval Academy, will continue to be able to do so because of budget cuts. It's one of the number one things on your website. Do you, Who wants to talk to that? Well, I think uh, any government institution struggles with managing its funds in an effective way. Uh, the, the Academy is certainly supportive of its music program, and it, it, I mean, it fully supports it. Uh -huh. But it can't do everything it would like to do because there just there just isn't enough to go around. So so our program is here to help people who want the program to be everything it can be to achieve that goal. And so not only are these performances by the men's glee club, the women's glee club, the gospel choir, the Catholic choir, the Protestant choir, the drum and bugle corps, pipes and drums, the orchestra and trident brass open to Naval Academy community the itself. They are open, open to, to the, pu the greater mm -hmm. Annapolis public. People from Anne Arundel County, people from Queen Anne's County, maybe Prince George's County, Washington, D.C., it's open to everybody, and there are amazing performances. Marjorie, you also travel. You mentioned you travel, some of these groups. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, mostly in the past that I'm aware of, we traveled partly in support of recruiting for the Naval Academy, but I was fortunate uh, when I was a midshipman, I traveled to New Orleans with the choir, I traveled to a lot of away football games with the Drum and Bugle Corps, and so uh, that's another way that the public is sharing in our music, and we're also performing a service for the Academy by letting people know that there's more than just, you know, what's there, I guess, in terms of music. Right. So, and you depend on donations. Barry? We depend on private funds that, that come uh, as well as as well as public money, as well as government money. And information about that, if people are listening and want to help you out, where will they go? They need to go to our website, mm -hmm. which is F-O-N-A-M, for Friends of Naval Academy Music, phonam.org, okay. and uh, check us out there. That's, that's the most effective way of doing it. And you, one of you mentioned this is a relatively new organization. How new? I think this is our Couple second years. year of, sure. of operation. And who recognized that there was a need for this? Well, that's a great question. Uh, over the years, a number of alumni have expressed an interest in wanting to help to pay back for, for a program that was very meaningful to them. So we consulted with former superintendents, former commandants, former deputy commandants to get some advice on how best to proceed. And this was their recommendation, that we set up a private organization to do that. And those people serve to this day on our advisory board. That's Some wonderful. very distinguished people. Um, and uh, so then we began reaching out to alumni singers mm -hmm. and sort of grow the, grow the thing organically. And what we're here to do today is to extend that reach to the Annapolis community. Do you need more people to help within the organization, not just by funds? All of the above. Uh, uh -huh. We're we're building a local board of around uh, sort of 12 to 15 people who, who meet once a month, look each other in the eye and say, what did we do this month to help Naval Academy Music? Uh, but we're reaching out. Have you heard from any of the other, you, you already mentioned the Annapolis Symphony Orchestra. Have you heard from any of the other resident companies in the Annapolis area on how um, f further partnerships that can help broaden the exposure or anything along those lines? We have had discussions, uh, not not much beyond the, the symphony because that's that's with whom we perform right. uh, when we do joint efforts. All right, we're gonna take another short break. We'll be right back on the 1430 Connection.
Welcome back to the 1430 Connection. I'm Donna Cole, and in the studio with me, Friends of Naval Academy Music. We have Dr. J. Barry Talley and Marjorie Rawhauser. This is a relatively new organization. The need is real for music to continue at the Naval Academy, for the great performances to continue at the Naval Academy, for not just the Naval Academy community, but for the greater Annapolis community, too, for those people that have continued going to these concerts and supporting all the wonderful performances you've been doing throughout the years. You need help. Yes, uh, and and we want to touch those people who have been touched by our programs and uh, are unaware there is a need uh, for private funds. We're letting them. We're letting you, if you're listening, <laughs> know that that need is real and exists, and we would welcome it. Musical emergency. You you gave me a sheet before we started the uh, the interview, like a good PR person would do of some talking points. What is a musical emergency, Barry? Well, one one great example of a musical emergency is you have a group touring. Uh, Europe. Uh, they're flying back by Navy Reserve Air. These are training flights. They're empty planes that are mm -hmm. going to fly. We can ask for a spot on those planes. So that gives us access to very inexpensive transportation. So we put half of our group on the plane. It flies us to the Azores. And it stops there because there are extraordinary headwinds. And they say, uh, we've uh, we've got uh, 100 knot headwinds. We don't have enough fuel to get you and us all the way to the U.S., so we're going to leave you here, uh, <laughs> but there'll be another plane along in about a week. Now, for the midshipman, this is not an emergency. This is a bonanza. Right. For the academic dean, it's a conniption fit. Yeah, you I mean would guess. 40 midshipmen are going to miss a week of class? No way. So what do we do? Uh-huh. You know, so do we scrounge another plane out of military resources somewhere, somehow? Right. Or do we just go out and buy 40 transatlantic this tickets? This is not at a fictional a story, right? Oh, no, this really happened. Uh-huh. Uh, and uh, we did get them back, and they didn't miss a week of class, and I won't tell you how. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it costs some money. But it costs some money and a lot of uh, hand-wringing. And so we felt that there was a need to have a strategic reserve, uh, just a pot of money that can sit there in case somebody needs it. And that's that's one example. And there are many. Yeah, and I can tell you, as a uh, veteran of the U.S. Navy, these flights that Barry was referring to are called military airlift flights. And when a plane is empty and not being used, they, they can be used for other means, such as getting uh, a troop of performers from the Naval Academy out and about. But if that plane needs to be used <laughs> for, for operational, for operational needs, needs sure. it gets called out and you're left in uh, Siganella, in the <laughs> Siganella, Sicily <laughs> also. Yes. yes, that was me. Aviano Air Base, Northern Italy. Yes, that was me. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, I get it. What, um, we all know that research, that time and time again, research has shown how the arts affect us. Uh, how the arts impact us, that they broaden our cultural awareness, that they um, they can be used greatly for recruiting at the Naval Academy, that they lower our blood pressure, perhaps, that they can get us through finals week. Yes? Sure. You had some experience Definitely. there yes. over and over and over again. Yes, probably. Um, do you see that every day? I, I would say yes, pretty much every day. I think that I'm fortunate to still be involved with music in my life. I have sang in an a cappella women's chorus for several years. I still play the piano relatively actively. So I think I still see that in my everyday life. And I think that, um, as Barry has said, I think it's important that we can, can share this um, experience with other people. In 1973 to 2006, you were the director of musical activities at the U.S. Naval Academy. Yes, so. that's correct. That's a long time. It was. I was at least durable. But the arts mean something to you, and you've seen this. And the uh, reason, let me yeah. say, that the reason I stayed so many years, because I didn't really expect to do that when I came here, uh -huh. uh, was that it was so important to the midshipmen. After I was here a couple of years, I came to realize this really meant a lot to them. Not, not just having fun, but at, at some deeper level. And I think that uh, music resides at a deeper level than many brain functions. There are lots of uh, stories about from musical therapists about people with dementia. Uh, and I have some personal knowledge of this. Uh, uh, that when they can't remember somebody's name or what day it is or when it is, that they can still respond to a piece of music they know. So it, it, music is there at a deeper level than many other functions. And it's in fact, important. it may be the last thing to go. 
So uh, I think uh, at the heart of it, there's a spirituality that's not really very well understood, and it may be a lot more important than is commonly thought. Again, the website is? F-O-N-A-M, phonam.org. And you need help. <laughs> not <Always>. you personally. <laughs> oh, me too. <laughs> As do we all. You need help to make this continue. And I, you know, I had mentioned before our interview started, I was on a tour of the Naval Academy with friends from out of town. And you heard the tour guide gave, giving some brilliant information that, about the history of the Academy, the history of the heroes that have been educated at the Academy, and the uh, sports program at the Academy. And I heard a lot about the sports program at the Academy, uh, the football, and the basketball, and the Army-Navy games, and how the sports program, the athletic program at the, the Academy builds teams. But arts, I didn't hear much about, and it's so important. And uh, Yes. I would agree. I, I think that, uh, you know, what the Naval Academy is there for is to train officers for the Navy and Marine Corps. And uh, performing at a high level requires loyalty, dedication, hard work, teamwork, sacrifice, and an unremitting pursuit of excellence. And you put all those qualities together, that, those are career-enhancing qualities. People who will do that in their Navy career tend to do very well as Naval officers. Thank you both very much for joining me today. I think it was a pleasure. Thank you. This is Donna Cole on the 1430 Connection. We will see you next week.